So I'm going to show you kind of some different types of weather forecasting, but just in general, when we talk about numerical weather prediction, what we're talking about is basically using computers, taking kind of initial conditions and plugging them into the computers. Now, the computers will have, um, the meteorologists will need to use a various, uh, a variety of models. That would be like what the computer is holding to go ahead and to accept those initial conditions. And the models are very complicated. So um, in general, what is done in numerical weather forecasting is they take the initial conditions, and before they actually even plug them into the computer, they go ahead and they, they smooth them. So that means they look for outliers. Like if uh, some initial conditions look wrong, they might get tossed out before they're fed into the computer. Another thing that they do is where there are gaps, they go ahead and what we say interpolate. So if, um, for instance, they have a data from point A here, location A, and data from location B here, and they're missing, let's just say it's like out in the middle of the desert, and then what they really need to do is to give their computer more information, they can go ahead and kind of fill this information in. That's called interpolation, and they'll go ahead and feed that into the computer. Then what they do is, this is kind of fun, I think. If this is now, we can kind of think of a timeline. If this is now and this is into the future, right? What they do basically is they predict not like the next hour or the next day or even the next week, but basically they just go, for instance, maybe two minutes into the future. So only, only two minutes of time lapse to the two minute forecast. And then they take those conditions, the, the forecasted conditions, and they plug them into the model again and they piggyback now another two minutes, so now they're four minutes into the future. Okay, so now they have officially forecasted the future, or uh, four minutes into the future. Then whatever those are, whatever that result is for a forecast, they plug it back in as if it were initial conditions again. And they can piggyback two-minute segment. We'll get them six minutes down the road. You see how that goes? Okay, and, and so forth and so forth. You're like, dang, by the time they get to a four-minute forecast, um, <laughs> How do I say this? Time is going to be caught up to them, but computers are very fast, okay? So, et cetera, et cetera. It's kind of like an, an iteration sort of thing. So you can kind of think of it doing it that way. Now, this sort of kind of piggybacking uh, minute to minute can give us um, our hourly forecast, and it can give us up to maybe even 24 or 48 hours. So it takes a lot of calculations. In fact, true story, the person attributed with kind of coming up with this idea of using models and plugging in um, initial conditions to, uh, to predict the, the future conditions of the atmosphere, um, new, what we say numerically, actually he thought of this, this idea, his name was, uh, I think, Berkshnees, I can't pronounce it right, I'm probably butchering his last name, but clear back in the year 1905. Okay, he thought of this idea of plugging initial conditions in um, and mathematically coming up with a forecast. The problem was there were no computers back in 1905. So what he would do is basically he would come up with tomorrow's forecast, but it would be like 14 days to come up with tomorrow's forecast, something like that. So I think that's kind of funny. wonder what he would think now. So just kind of some general terms. Prognostic charts then are what the forecast we believe is going to be. Uh, model output statistics, um, they can tweak the computer output put a little bit. So just in general, what do we what kind of snags we run into with numerical weather forecasting? Well, I think I've mentioned before the atmosphere is very complicated. And so our models that we come up with, um, you know, we do the best we can, and we're going to see that, or you would, as you might imagine, if you look into it, we have to have different models for different parts of the world. But, um, I don't know, they do their best. The other thing is something I'm going to talk about in the next segment called um, chaos. And it has to do with those initial conditions. There's a little bit of uncertainty or play in all of those initial conditions. 
So if you're ever wondering why forecasts go wrong, and I have a whole slide on that coming up later in this chapter, um, you know, there are some reasons for you.